All right, guys, so I'm back and I have a cold, but I had a cold for a couple days after I watched Chucky Season 2, Episode 7, Go to the Chapel, which I, of course, saw the night of whenever it came out on Wednesday, but I'm recording this and posting it, like, almost close to a week afterward because I've just been sick and I've been busy, so... But let's the show must go on. I'm going to go ahead and just talk about it regardless of how bad I sound on camera. Uh, starting out with this episode, there was that shocker with the last episode with Nadine. And I like that this one just does a good job with, with establishing Nadine again. Um, a big surprise. I really love the fact that Nadine comes back via Lexi's hallucinations on drugs, but that's really awesome. Um, I love how it how it starts. It it really gives a good connection between Lexi and Nadine in this episode, and I really love that. Um, the episode also starts out with a with all the confessionals. So, like throughout this episode, there's going to be a confessional for almost every character where. Uh, Father Bryce is talking, played by Devin Sawa, he's talking to almost everybody in the pews, if that's what it's called. I think it's called pews. Um, I love that Kyle and Andy reunite again, and um, Kyle says immediately to Andy, you look like fucking Jesus. I thought that was a really good, really funny line and funny delivery. Um, I like how Dr. Mixter, they know what she's up to now, but she... They have to cooperate, so they all agree to give Chucky an exorcism. That's really hilarious. Uh, and while this is going on, Tiffany and Jennifer Tilly's body is still on the run with um, Glinda. Or no, Glenn and, um, and Jennifer Tilly in the Tiffany doll. <laughs> Tiffany doll's body. So... She's on the run while this is going on. So this episode is two consecutive different storylines, which I think is great. I really love when they do that. Uh, I like how just really good these characters are in this episode. They do a really good job with all of these connections with Lexi and Nadine, who has passed away, but is an angel. And I really liked that and thought that was sweet. Um... I like how Nika meets Andy. She met Andy before, but of course Chucky had taken over her body in Cult of Chucky. So she has met him, but not really. So it was great to see that connection. Uh, I really liked, like I said, the Nadine and Lexi thing is one of my favorite things about the episode. Because it was just so genuinely sad and so genuinely heartwarming to watch these characters together. Even though one of them is gone. Uh, where Lexi is talking to Nadine and saying, like, I'm sorry I couldn't save you. And Nadine, being in the way she talks, in the in the sweet way she talks, she says, we all go to that amusement park up in the sky one day. I just got my ticket early. And I thought it was sweet, but it was just also sad as well, of course. Uh, I love, too, that Chucky also has a Hannibal Lecter mask in this episode, where it's the right here, like in Silence of the Lambs. And I really like how he pressures Glinda because Glinda, like I've said before, in Seed of Chucky, it was implied that she was going to become like her dad, a killer, and Glinda was going to be the good good one out of the two. But she really hasn't since, and Chucky is pressuring her. And there's a great scene where it's like Silence of the Lambs where Chucky is tied up with the Hannibal Lecter face mask on. Well, Glenda is walking away, kind of like Clarice Starling does in Silence of the Lambs. But I love the dialogue that Chucky gives Glenda. Like, no matter who you are, you're my kid. You are a killer, and you know you are. And Chucky's already been pressuring her, so that's awesome. Um, that's a great scene. Um, I love how Glenda, as well, tells Chucky that they're not good parents. Chucky and Tiffany are horrible parents to them. And Glenda considers themselves an orphan. So... Glenn and Glenda both consider themselves orphans. So I really like that dialogue. I thought that was great with those characters. Um, and then we get an exorcism for Chucky. So we got the Silence of the Lambs big reference. And now we're getting the exorcist big reference. And this is literally like the exorcist where 
they, they're saying the power of, of power of Christ compels you. Chucky is saying cuss words. He's saying the dialogue from The Exorcist, like your mother sucks cocks in hell. Uh, and then he says, then Devin says, we've all seen that movie. And then Chucky says, well, with your mom, it's true. Like, that's good good humor. And that's really funny. Uh, it's a really great exorcism scene with Chucky where he has he pukes out green puke like, like Reagan does. Uh, it's lifted up in the air just like that. It's really funny with, with just a version of Chucky doing it. Uh, and while this is happening, I, with, uh, Tiffany on the run, um, Jennifer Tilly runs out of the car, Jennifer Tilly in the doll body of Tiffany, runs out of the car, and she gets ran and exploded by a semi, and that was surprising, because I thought Jennifer Tilly herself would come back into the body of her Jennifer Tilly body, but I guess not. Maybe she'll come back. I mean, there's always something in these in these movies that'll make them come back, or these shows, or the show that'll make them come back. These characters. I don't believe Jennifer Tilly is dead yet. Um, I think she's still alive. Uh, and I liked that Chucky takes over Father Bryce and blows him up. He literally just blows up into pieces, and it's like a shot where like you see his body blow apart, but it's like. 20 different angles, 20 different shots of, like, of like different shots of his body blowing up. That was hilarious. That was great. Uh, and I really like that, like, with the confessional scenes in this episode, I like the one with Nika saying that she, she, do, she really wants to just stop Chucky and Tiffany. Um, she really just hates them and wants them to, wants them to stop. And she has the... She has the chant where Chucky is taken out of her body. And then Jake tries to drown the Chucky doll. Uh, but then Sister Ruth, the one who saw Chucky alive and thinks he's God, puts Lexi at gunpoint, which was crazy. And Sister Ruth gets ricocheted in, into, the, into her eye with a knife by Glinda. So Glinda is doing a killing. So it's another step to her becoming a killer. But that's great with the eye, with the eye and Sister Ruth. That was awesome. Uh, and he shoots this Chucky that runs away in the mouth. His jaw explodes, falls down on the ground, bleeding everywhere. Um, and then they're acting like it's all over. And of course there's another episode, but they act like Chucky's gone for good. And I'm like, oh, I don't believe that. That's one thing with this show that and the movies that I'll give an argument to that I don't love is that it never feels like it's the end. There's always going to be something that's going to happen and it's going to keep going. Um, uh, so there's a big thing at the end as well where Tiffany makes it to the church as Jennifer Tilly, of course, and Glinda is, Glenn and Glinda are there. Nika puts Tiffany at gunpoint and um, Nika, I mean, and then uh, Glenn gets shot and then they have to go to the hospital. So now they are stuck with this reveal now that they're, that one of them is injured and they don't know what to do. They got to get to the hospital. And then Dr. Mixture is implying that she has got part of Chucky inside of her. And that's how it ends. And that's a great episode. I really dig it. I can't wait for the next episode. The uh, the teaser trailer where it showed Chucky going down a chimney with a chainsaw. Awesome. Love that. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited for the next episode. Like I said, it's in a couple days. But that is it for my review for episode 7. Can't wait for the last episode of this season. Awesome. Thanks, you guys, for watching. See you later.